be with you this morning. Uh, greetings from New York City, amen, church. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 23. You know, it's, uh, it's great to be back in London, England. And uh, it, it's awesome because we were here back in 2008. I was able to come 2008. And uh, this year, I was able to bring my wife, Patrick, our two children, Naomi and Isaiah. And so it's been a great time. We, we actually arrived um, Tuesday and we're able to see our family here in Croydon, in Thornton Heath. And so uh, a little bit of background, my, 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 uh, my background is Jamaican. And so, uh, you know, Patrick is actually born in Jamaica, in Kingston. Yeah, man, we are talking. And so, but what's interesting about it is the fact that my dad left uh, Jamaica and then went, I believe it was when he went to Cambridge, and then was drafted into the army, the British army. He left Jamaica, because remember, Jamaica was, was pretty much a British colony, so he left Jamaica, went to England, and then got drafted, was in the British Army, in the Remy, the uh, electrical engineer, for like 23 years. My mom left Jamaica, came to the States, uh, went to nursing school in New York. Her best friend in nursing school was my dad's sister. So she got them connected, married 74, I popped out a couple years later, and it was awesome. <laughs> and so my dad's sister lives in Croydon, Thornton Heath. So we were able to go by there, spend hours with them, sharing with them. Patrick had an amazing talk with my cousin. So pray, we're trying to get him out this Sunday. So pray we can get him on out. And, uh, but it's just so good to be back. Um, uh, London really has a special place in my heart. I mean, I'll tell you what, I grew up being, my dad was pretty much British. And so um, we would sit down watching Faulty Towers. We would watch Are You Being Served? I mean, all the British stuff growing up. And of course, they had a James Bond, but that's like, you know. But it was all the British stuff, and I'm like, so I come here, and all of a sudden, the British accent starts to come back, you know? And I'm like, all right, yeah, it's good, yeah. And, I, and so it's like, I'm like, okay, you know? <laughs> but it's just great to be here. Uh, thank you, thank you so much uh, for being just incredible hosts. Thank you so much to the Williamsons. As always, a fantastic job with the conference every year. Um, the London Church, so grateful for your hospitality. Uh, I, I just, you guys are serving us. Like Victor has been an amazing servant to us. Uh, Yomi, just an incredible servant. Key, I mean, it, it's incredible. Thank you, thank you so much. And of course, so good to be here with my dear brother, Kip and Elena McKean, amen. amen. Well, we're gonna take a look here at what the Bible has to say. Uh, the, the, the title I've been given this morning is Holy is the Lord Almighty leading by personal example. Now that's a, a pretty convicting uh, message to have to preach, because obviously, you know, you, you get humbled off the bat. <laughs> that's like, okay, amen. But uh, I, I wanna thank Tim again for just an incredible lesson, because really it's about our motives, it's about a purity of heart, because it, either we're gonna be holy or we're gonna be haughty. And that's really what it boils down to there. If we don't check our, if we, our motives in our hearts, we're gonna get haughty. Yeah. That's where Satan wants to attack us. If sin is the tree, uh, pride is the trunk. And we gotta be super careful about where that is. Let's take a look at Matthew 23 and see why this is so important. Matthew 23, the Bible says here, then Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for men to see. We don't want this to be said about us. You with me here? Um, why is this so important to lead by personal example? Because people do what people see. Yeah. Let me repeat that again. Yeah. People do what people see. And so as leaders, we're painting the vision. We're painting the picture, rather, of God's vision. Um, we can't just communicate about it or pontificate about it, right? We need to live it. Yeah. And if we're effective in, about it and modeling that example, it will become alive in our people. And so, I, I know for me, you know, we, we can focus on strategic planning for our ministries. We can focus on powerful preaching. We can focus on deep discipling, but all that is second to our example. It, it, it's, it's second. Because people, your, your life will discredit what you preach. 
if you allow it to. And so God has chosen us to be his servant leaders, to have you in this room right now. God has chosen you to be able to have an impact. We got to make the most of it. Amen? Amen. And I, I think for all of us, we have to remember, too, that just like we know, once saved is not always saved. Yeah. Once a leader, not always a leader. Yeah. You with me here? Yeah. It's a daily decision. Take a look at Revelations real quick here with me. I know all the, the different points from uh, the conference will be in Revelation. I, I want to show you quickly here. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. This, again, this is written to the church. This is important. Remember that. In Revelation chapter 3, he says here in the second part of verse 1, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. See, it's not about our reputation. You know, in the world, it's all about reputation. It's all about how you look. It's how people perceive you. It's not about reputation in God's kingdom. It's about our relationship with God. And that will determine our reality of where things are really at. That's what it boils down to. You know, having a last name like Smelly, you know, you come into the room automatically with a reputation. And I always tell people, you know, that's a character building name right there. It is. You gotta smell good all the time, you know? You gotta. And I just think it's like the scripture says to some, you're the fragrance of life, to others, the stench of death. That's my scripture right there is a smell. And so, but it's not about a reputation, it's about my relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, you know, as, as leaders we know, you know, people can be fickle. They love you one moment, they're against you the next. And so, I don't do this to please people. We do this to please our God. If that's your heart, then God will bless you in a powerful way. And that really is the reason why there were so many powerful mentoring relationships in the Bible. That's how Jesus built the 12. You had Paul and Timothy, Elijah and Elisha, because that, they had that kind of heart to build a relationship. Amen. And not just a ritual of what we're going through. You with me here? And so my first point today is simply, number one, make every effort to set an example. Make every effort to set an example. First Timothy chapter 4. Okay. First Timothy chapter 4, you probably know where I'm going here. You should be able to quote this scripture. First Timothy 4, 12, the Bible says this. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. young. Now what's interesting is that the Bible says here that people will look down on you. Okay. Don't let anyone look down on you. So there's a reason why people can look down on you and be justified in doing so. Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the world? Is that what it says? I need you to follow me in your Bibles here. We are a Bible-based church, amen? Okay. It says set an example for who? The believers in speech, life, love, faith, and purity. You know, that's, that's, that's a powerful scripture right there. Every D group I have with the brothers, you know, if I go to a new church, whether it's Syracuse or D.C. or L.A. or wherever, I always kind of pull in my guys. I'm like, guys, this is the scripture we're going to hold to. Yeah. On, You're going to hold me to it, and I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah. And I think this is huge because very often as leaders, we, we can think, well, we're doing a pretty good job based on the world. But how are we doing in regards to the kingdom of God? And not just in our church, but around the world. And truly, you've got to ask yourself, wow, if everyone was like me, where would the church be? You know, I appreciate um, our brother Kip. You know, he has a reputation of being a visionary and a hard worker. That's his reputation. I can tell you that's true. Now, you know, for many people, you know, when all this drama happened with the ICUC, with me being in the East Coast, I was on the East Coast, I didn't know Kip. I didn't know him. All I knew is that he loved God, and he was holding to the same standards we had, and I had, when I, when I studied the Bible, and I saw this was true. And now he was setting an example. He and Atlanta were setting an example. And I'm like, that's the example we need to follow. And so in the Syracuse church, we, I remember the first Portland Missions Jubilee in 2004. Yeah. Right? That's actually when Patrick and I uh, started dating again. Yeah, right. I, 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 I asked him to be my girlfriend in the Portland Rose Gardens right there. So we came in not dating. We left dating. And uh, it was pretty awesome right there. But, you know, it, it was powerful because I remember the example, and I'm like, that's what I want to imitate. Mm. I, he doesn't probably even remember this, but I'm going to share a little quick story. 
When we first went to plant the DC church, um, we, we, were, we were meeting downtown, and uh, I remember I, I saw something that Kip did to Elena. And it, you know, I was like, but I thought, is, it, is he? Maybe he's just being a little short. I, I don't know. And I, I remember talking about it. I was like, bro, should I talk to Kip about this? And I'm like, here I am. Who the heck am I to talk to him about his marriage? I'm not even married. What the? He's like, bro, it's a, he's a disciple. Sure. I remember going to Kip. I was like, bro, you know, I don't, remember, I don't remember what it was, bro. Something really minor. But it struck me. I was like, bro, you know, I think you might have left her in the room and you, you were going, you were going, going, going. I was like, and he's like, bro, thank you so much. I'm going to go back and apologize to her right now. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. and you know, who am I? I was nobody. But I saw a man that had humility. Yeah. And if a man could have humility to be able, and when it comes to your wife, you know, right there, you know. But you know what? I'm going to make it happen right now. I don't know if you remember that, but it, it was like that. I said, bro, I'll follow you. Right. It's like a little mini test for me. I don't <laughs> follow you anyway, I'm just joking. But uh, there, there's this quote by Albert Schweitzer. Um, it says, example is not the main thing in influencing others. It's the only thing. Example is not the main thing in influencing others. It's the only thing. And so, you know, having been with Kip now in LA and different places, I've seen him. I know he makes those 50 phone calls and he returns people's phone calls. I see him have the heart to get up early, go home late. I see it. And so for me, I'm trying to live the same way. Um, I know for me, uh, as a parent too, anyone who knows, uh, who's a parent knows that example is huge, right? Now having a little toddler, Naomi, gonna turn three this January. Um, no matter what we want our children to do, <laughs> they're gonna imitate what we do. It's so convicting. It's so humbling. I mean, even the faces she'll make. And so like, now she'd be like, you know, um, I'll, I'll correct her, she's like, what, what did she say? She would be like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> or, um, or she'll just say stuff and I'm like, and there's a part of me that wants to laugh because she's like, but you know what, I'm like, Patrika's awesome at this, she's great. She keeps a straight face. I may have to turn and then come back and deal with it. But, man, I know that everything I do, I'm setting an example for her. In the same way in our churches, people are watching. Everything you do, speech, life, love, faith, purity, they're watching. And so, I think we have to remember we are called to be an example. So what are some areas, practicals, that we need to make every effort in? Well, I think our quiet time. Amen. What time do you get up in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. I think for those of us who are in the ministry, we got to make sure we're setting an example to our people. What time do you get up in the morning? How's your Bible study? How's your prayer life? You know, I, I've really fought to try to pray like three times and do that Daniel prayer. And I've, I've fallen here and there, but I've been trying to stay focused. Because I know if I can just stay close to God, he will, he will bless our efforts, and I trust it. Um, but not having McDonald's quiet times, having deep times. You, we gotta get deeper into the Word. Get books, whatever you gotta get. Build a library. But have a quiet time where someone can say, you know what, preach your quiet time today. Stand up here, preach your quiet time. Could you do it? If we're leaders of God's people. Right? Um, here's another area. Visitors at church. Yes. Yes. We, we got to go there, guys. I hope we're not uncomfortable with this. We got to set the example in speech, life, love, faith, purity. Right? We got to be effective at getting people out of the church. You know, right now, just to share with you, um, since I, you know, have to be an example, um, and share about my example, right now, as, a, as an evangelist, I lead two Bible talks. Two campus Bible talks. Amen. Because we have so many campus Bible talks going on, the campus minister can't go to the Bible talk that I need to do, and it's actually at the flagship school. Now, the good thing is, it's like right down the street from me. Maybe 10 blocks, I'm like, amen. Yeah. But it's our city college ministry, and guys, we've been averaging 18 people at Bible talk. Wow. With six disciples. <laughs> and so, we'll meet people from the ICU, and we do it Tuesdays and Thursdays, same 18 average. 
Well, that's 23, 24, 25 sometimes. I think the highest we had is 25. We have, we have the, uh, 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 basically a, a board we put up with our name. People have the shirts, Disciples of the Cross, and we have this quote on the back, intelligence is not a substitute for integrity. <laughs> and we're going out, and we're sharing, and it's cool because we meet people from the ICUC in our form of fellowship, and they're like, you're the evangelist and you're here? I'm like, yeah, evangelists evangelize. <laughs> that, that's what we do. Um, and I, I really appreciate my wife because, we, you know, with two kids, we make it happen. Amen. We switch. Whoop, okay, you go. Then I go. Okay, we make it work. That's right. yeah. uh, and we make the most of our time. But do we have visitors at church and Bible talk? How, how, how is it when you call people to it? And then they're looking at you and you don't have any friends. And you have any friends. Now, I always talk, talk to people like, oh, listen, number one, did you have people at church? Yes or no? Amen. But did you try your best to get someone there? Yeah. Amen. If you, if you can answer yes to one of those questions, to God be the glory. You with me here? Yeah. But we, we got to be an example for the believers. Right. Yes. Um, another area, practical, contribution. You know, we got to call our people. We can't call our people to something if we're not doing it. Yeah. Right. right now, for Patrick and I, we, we give a pretty decent amount in contribution, uh, 17%. And our administrator looks at us like, you sure you really want to give that much? Well, well you know, well, it's, it's, our, it's our tithe and it's our offering to God. And is it tight? Yeah, it's tight. But I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if I call people to raise, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to raise. If I call them to raise this much, I'll raise a little bit more. Amen. I will not call people to do something that I am not doing. Amen. You with me here? I'm not an armchair quarterback. I cannot do it. And so we've got to have that heart as well. You know, the old ad adage is, talk is cheap. People will look at you before they listen to you. And so you got to work on changing yourself if you want others to improve. And I think it really is the most valuable gift you can give to your church. Because long after you leave, and you will leave one day. You know, we're not in the in denominational world where you're going to, you know, be in a church for 30 years. Um, and so long after you, people will remember more about how you live than what you said. And that's the truth of it. Yeah. Make every effort to send an example. Point number two, others will be led astray if you don't. Wow. Galatians chapter two. Galatians chapter two, let's turn it over. Amen. Others will be led astray if you don't. I was thinking of calling this lesson the law of the twos because every script I'm gonna show you here, um, and, and you're gonna notice it's gonna be like two, 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 two. You're gonna see it in just a second. Galatians chapter two. Come on, bro. Let's take a look here in verse 11. When Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face. Oh boy. Has someone ever opposed you to your face? And another a brother opposed you to your face. I opposed him to his face because he was clearly in the wrong. Before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back. Uh -oh and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. Whoa. Barnabas led astray? Yeah. Guys, others will be led astray if we're not making every effort to an example. Other leaders will be led astray if we don't set that example. You know, I, I've seen people fall away because of the hypocrisy. Yes. And let, let's be honest, we saw that in the form of fellowship. Yeah. And so our lack of discipline can have an impact. Um, it can dishearten your leadership group when you call them to work harder and you're not setting the pace. On, um, now, you know, obviously with, with different things in life, kids and all this stuff, you, sometimes you lead in the front, sometimes you gotta lead from the back. You push from the back or you lead in front. You got to figure it on out there. But either way, you're working. All right. You may be delegating, but you're working twice as hard to follow up. You with me here? Yeah. And so, again, we got to call ourselves higher. You know, right now, we're getting ready for missions. And uh, God, God's blessed us. I mean, in New York City, it was, it was, it was rough. Um, we got there. It was maybe 2,200 in contribution. Um, the Adams, I mean, valiant, incredible job just holding the church together. 
Um, but you know, there are maybe 50 something odd disciples there. And then come to find out as we're going through it, you realize, well, those people aren't really disciples. Later. Well, I've been actually doing, you know, crack for two years. Uh, oh, well, yeah, I actually got married. Um, but, you know, I became a disciple, but really I just wanted to get back at my wife and I never really repented. And this is like two, three years later. Just sin, deep sin. And we're like, and this is like, and this is campus students who so were like, okay, no shepherds. We had to bring in shepherds. We're like, well, let's, let's just pray, beg God, get advice, and turn this thing around by the power of the Spirit. Oh, and now we're almost at 120 disciples. Yeah. We got a 6,000 uh, contribution budget. And so it's like, you know what, but it's the grace of God. We've sent out over 25 disciples. We planted Boston the first year we were there. We're like, amen. But I remember getting ready for missions, and we're like, missions, missions. We got to raise how much again? OK. <laughs> it's like, and you know, I really appreciate it. Tim got me this elephant, this elephant from Chennai. And, and Kip, we have this little, he calls me Hannibal, because Hannibal basically took these elephants over the Alps to conquer Rome. He's like, Andrew, you got a lot of Alps right here going on. But if you can get over these Alps, you'll be the Hannibal. Like, Come on. So he was just spurring me on right there. Come on. We'll do this with the Lord. And uh, I just remember us saying, okay, you know what? What are we going to do? You got all these people that don't want to give us money. Okay. Um, well, we're going to run. We're going to run. We're going to run the George Washington Bridge. And literally, it was awesome. This one sister, she raised, we, we got sponsor sheets, you know, running for missions. This one sister raised $1,000 in a week. Sponsor me. Sponsor me. I'm going to run. We're going we, to, I, I was there early. We're stretching out the disciples. We're, we're singing. We're gonna, I ran a full marathon that day, 20 Woo! laps across the George Washington Bridge. <laughs> half marathon. And so, but you got to be in there. It was a half marathon, not, not a full marathon. Oh, Sorry, that, there's a difference there. But, uh, but you got to set that example. Yes. People want to see it. Yes. Don't just say, oh, go, go raise money. No, show me how. Lead me. Show me how to do it. Um, and I, I think this is huge for us, guys, because remember, um, we want to pull in the remnant. Yeah. And the remnant are watching. Oh, yeah. They're watching and they're looking before they even say a word. Yeah. And so I remember being in LA at one point, and it was funny because, you know, Patrick and I would be bringing out visitors to church and stuff, and the remnant were surprised. There was this one sister, she's like, wow, you guys are bringing out people? I'm like, yes, this is what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, but how many people have you brought out to church recently? Let, let's go there. Because, yeah. um, I mean, if, if we're in a full-time ministry, we get paid to do this. Amen. You, know, and I, you know, Patrick and I, you know our story. I was in health administration. She was, uh, had a law degree. I'm mean, sorry, she was, actually had a law practice. Yeah. Gave it up to go into the ministry. Um, obviously, we don't do this for the money. But I take, I, I, I value taking, you know, God's, God's gift to us, our salary, very seriously. This matters to me. And so, it's all about prayer and the ministry of the word. Yeah, that's right. There are other things people can do. Prayer and the ministry of the word yeah. is what we're called to do. That's right, yeah. And so, remember, our disciples, they work eight-hour jobs. Mm -hmm. And then they got to come home and do the ministry. Yeah. You with me here, guys? Yeah. They work eight hour jobs or more, then they gotta come home and crank the ministry. Somehow get their kids to bed, prepare dinner, crank all that stuff out. You with me here? And so I take it seriously. I, I wanna give you, I wanna make sure, see if you have a challenge. I wanna give you a challenge to pray to have a visitor with you every, every Bible talk, church service. Go after having two commitments, at least. I would challenge you to go after having two commitments a day. Why not? Why not? Go after it. Go after it. See where your faith is at. Now, do you think that's too much? Well, if you're in the full-time ministry, that's what we got here to do. Amen. You with me here? No. If you're sending a text, follow up. You know, we, we can do this. We can do this. But you know what the funny thing is? I take that back. God can do this. You got to believe God can work through you. Here's another thing. Set up Bible studies with people you meet i.e., not just people in your region. Yeah. 
You with me here? Right. Like, don't say, well, I'm fruitful because I helped somebody else. No, no, no. OK, bro, bro. You go after finding someone and bringing them into the Lord. Now, of course, you're fruitful if you help, so of course. But we lead. How are we showing? You know, it's interesting. At, at Bible Talk the other day, um, one of the guys I'm raising up, Sergio, really cool guy from Suriname. And uh, he's raising up, man. He did his first Bible Talk last week. And, um, you know, at, at, at right before, half an hour before Bible Talk, we had a little huddle. We prayed. And then we're in a big, like, you know, cafeteria. And we got to sign up. We're there. Everyone knows who we are now. Everybody. We got shirts on. It's, it's legit. And so we gather. We pray. And I, I noticed that Sergio, he's just, you know when you can tell someone's just a little bit, like he's trying to give, but he's feeling a little bit sheepish. And I'm like, I, I have things I could do, but I'm like, you know what? Bro, let's go share it. Because really, at that time, Sergio was basically getting everyone to go share their faith together. And I'm like, Sergio, I'm going to share my faith with you. And so we went around. I'm like, and I, I went, just, hi, everyone. Sorry to interrupt your lunch or excuse me your lunch. I want to invite you guys to an incredible Bible talk discussion we're having at 1 o'clock right over here. Are you guys Christians? No? Why not? OK. What, what else are you doing? All right, just going and having fun with them. I think we're doing some kind of Halloween thing. You guys believe in Halloween? Ghosts, goblins, yeah? Well, we're going to talk about what real spirituality is all about. The devil is real. Demons are real. You want to find them more? Come join us. And we're just having fun. He's like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. And all of a sudden, I, we do that a couple times. He's like, you just see the faith just well into his eyes. And he's gone. And you know, it was so awesome because <laughs> he started sharing with some other sisters. And I just think, man, that's the heart. Others will be led astray if you don't. If you don't, people, they'll, they'll just faith will just dwindle, dwindle, dwindle. And you can see it in their eyes. You can see it. Let's go after it. Amen, guys? Amen. Number three, devote yourself to being a great follower. Second Kings chapter 2. Devote yourself to being a great follower. You know, um, I've, I've said it and I'll say it again. I'm so grateful to be discipled by Kip. You know, last night, he just, you know, I, I love this guy. I, I know he loves me. He just, just said, hey guys, come on up, man. We, let's go to the lounge and we've got a great view. And he and Elena, Elena's having fun with, with the kids. She's just loving them. Like, it's crazy. You know, they get me. It's, it's, we just feel loved by them. Yeah. And, um, I know he loves me. I love him. And I got to do a better job, bro, of just staying in contact with you more. Um, but I think here for us, guys, we got to make, we got to show our heart of loyalty to be that great follower that I'm following him because he's following Christ. Right. Take a look here in 2 Kings. And we, the scripture here in 2 Kings is powerful because obviously we see it here with Elijah and Elisha. And it says here, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a world, when Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal, Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. So, you know, it's interesting because Elisha could have said, yeah, I'm going to do my thing. I don't, I don't need to be around you anymore. I'm going to do my thing. But Elijah said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets at Bethel came out to Elijah and asked, do you know the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Now, it's interesting the word master there. Your, in in, in, in uh, martial arts, your sabonim, your, 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 your sensei, your guide, one who goes before you. It's pretty cool, right? Is that the way we consider our discipling relationships? Someone who's gone before us to teach us the way. Um, yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of prophets of Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. <clears throat> and Elijah said to him, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. As he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Let's stop here. That's a heart that wants to follow. You know, there's a lot of people that, that can't wait to just, boom, I'm going to do my own thing. Versus, I want to know you. Yeah. I Amen. want to walk with you. Amen. It's not about me going out and doing my own thing. I, I will grasp every bit of insight and knowledge and heart I can before God makes it clear I got to go. Right. Is that your heart in regards to your discipler? 
you know, um, I, I think we got to seek a lot of advice. You know, it's not just about doing the right things. Um, it's about learning the right heart. I, I think very often, sometimes with leadership, we think that there's like this, you know, 101 ways to build a church. If I get all the 101 ways, then I become this perfect evangelist. No, that's, that's not it. I mean, there are obviously tools and, and, and lessons you need to learn. But I want to learn and imitate the heart of Kip. Yeah. Not just his 101 ways to build a church. I want to be his friend. I want to serve under his leadership. I want to be loyal to him as he follows the Lord. Is that what you want to do? It's the same way I felt about Chris Broom. It's the same way I, I wanted my guys to, to feel about me. They're not just doing this because, oh, well, you know, this is who I got assigned to or whatever, and I'll find. I mean, are you friends with your discipling partner? Or you're like, well, you know, this is the guy in my life, so I'll just stick with him for now. But I wish I was really being discipled by Kip. <sighs> Let me tell you something. If Kip said today, Andrew, uh, someone else needs to disciple you, I'd be like, bro, amen. It was awesome being with you. Amen. Who do I need to give my heart to next? You see, it, it's, if that's God's plan, now obviously I'm not going to be fired up, but I mean, I'll give my heart. I'm not going to be like, whoo, thank God. No, it's, I wouldn't do that. I know. But, but at the same time, I'm surrendered to it. And I'll give my heart to the next person. See, in the kingdom, sometimes when it, people look at, well, who disciples you is this kind of, you're discipled by him. You're discipled by her. Mm. How about you just be discipled by Jesus? Because you know the funny thing is, is that God puts the person in your life who's there to disciple you. And you may think, well, well, uh, I know things he doesn't, or I think I'm better. Well, then, then God's teaching you humility. Amen. Then God's teaching you surrender. Amen. Are you devoted to being a great follower? You cannot be a great leader if you're not a great follower. Yeah. You can't be. Exactly. How can you teach someone to do something you're not? Come on. Yeah. You know, I, I think for me, the heart of it is we, we got to find ways to spend time. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's huge. I, I always like the scripture in 2 Timothy 1, 16 to 18 with Anissa Forrest. Um, we didn't have time to turn there. But it, it's interesting how he searched all over Rome yes. until he found Paul. Yeah. I think sometimes it's like you call someone, man, he didn't return my phone call. Exactly. I don't know if I want to be discipled by him anymore. He doesn't love me. I'm a derelict. <laughs> How do you think it was back in the day without cell phones? Without email? Facebook? Uh, you know what? Let, come on, let's, let's turn over to second tier. We got time. I'm doing great actually on time. This is awesome. Let, let's take a look. I just want you to see it. Because you know, sometimes we, we, we get this attitude like, I'm entitled for you to get back to me when I want you to get back to me. Discipling is a privilege. You with me here? Not a right. It's a privilege to be discipled that someone wants to spend time with my derelictal self and want to help me. 2 Timothy chapter 1. The Bible says here, in verse 16, may the Lord show mercy to the household of Anisiphorus because he often refreshed me. Is that, is that who you are to your discipling partner? Refreshing? You should ask them. Do, you, do, I, do I refresh you? And was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. I want to challenge you to have the heart of an Isiphorus. To fight to have that time with the person that's in your life. Um, you know, I, I appreciate our shepherds in the church. You know, we get together with them every Monday night. Amen. We fight to make sure we have our time. And there's always reasons. Oh, it's tough that they drive in from Staten Island, drive in from Long Island, and we make that time happen. Because we want to learn what we need to be. 
We want it for the church, help in our marriage, whatever it takes. Yeah. Is that the heart you have? Point number four, entrust your training to reliable men and women. Entrust your training to reliable men and women. We're ready here in 2 Timothy, so just look a little bit down. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Entrust your training to reliable men and women. 2 Timothy 2, 2. And the things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will be also qualified to teach others. Who are you entrusting what you know to? Now, that's not easy sometimes. But you need to do it if you're going to be a God's leader. You with me here? Yeah. Um, God has blessed us in New York City to have built a powerful staff group. I mean, we have an incredible... I mean, right now, it, it's composed of about 14 people. We have, in New York City, we have six house churches. And so there's a man and woman for each, for each house church. Then we have our shepherds, and then we have people representing the Latin ministry, because we're trying to build a Latin ministry in New York City. Yeah. You with me here? Latinos! Yeah. Amen! And so... At the end of this month, the 24th, we're going to have our first Latin service. Very, very, very exciting. And we're trying to pull in. Now, AMS has been cranking, too, so we're trying to figure out exactly. We, we got the woman in mind. We're trying to get the guy. But we're going to pull them on into having our staff meeting, too, because AMS is blowing up. We just had an amazing AMS showcase. I mean, violinists, rappers, singers, piano. I mean, it's ridiculous. And so we're raising money for missions. Like, everyone, $5. Let's go. $5. Come check it out. Raising money for missions. But are, are we entrusting our training to reliable men? I mean, we got to build that inner circle where we can talk. And you can be real and get open and really yeah. give the ministry training that you've received. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? That's talking through the calendar. How to think, contribution, discipling. I mean, I, I think for me, one of the biggest things I've been learning about being a preacher, it, it's not about being a preacher. It's not about being an administrator. It's not even about being a counselor. It's about being a leader. Leadership is an art. To move people's hearts, to motivate people, to have the right motivations and purity of heart. That's an, it, it's, guys, people devote their whole lives to leadership. How many leadership books do you have? Just learning how to move people. And so, who have you poured your heart into? I, I think we got to test people in their reliability and train them to be fruitful. But you got to train them, most of all, how to think. I, I think this is huge. I think sometimes we think, if I just give people, here's A to Z, do this, and you, everything will go well with you. That's not it. Do they know how to think the way you do? If they're in a situation, okay, what would Michael do in this situation? What would Tim do in this situation? I mean, is that the way they think? Because they've been trained. Because this is the way Jesus would have done it. Right? And so, I think for us, like right now, back in New York City, we're here. I have total confidence that New York City Church is running on all cylinders. The shepherds know exactly what they need to do. Everyone has their marching orders. They're cranking. Josh leading the singles. Kwaku leading the campus. I mean, everyone knows what they need to do. Everyone knows their responsibilities. I know they're acting right now as if I was there. Can you say that about your church? If you were to leave, would your church be able to go, no problem, not even a hitch? That's not easy. I'm not saying we've arrived either, but you know what I'm talking about? I mean, that's, that's pretty serious right there. Um, I, I think this is huge because very often the, the challenging part about this is that we got to let go of the insecurity and pride. Sometimes to give up that wisdom, you think, well, hold on a second. If I tell those people everything I know, then they may become better than me. They may take my role. You know what? You're right. And to God be the glory. Is this about you? Or is this about what's best for God's church? You know, I, I got to end here. So my, my last point is, look and pray for God to raise up new leaders. Um, look and pray for God to raise up new leaders. You know, it, it, I'll give you the scripture here in 1 Samuel 2. Come on, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35, the Bible says this. Because remember, God raises people up. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35, it says, God speaking here, he says, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest 
who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his house, and he will minister before my anointed one always. You know, um, right now I'm praying for Samuel 2, 35. I, I'm praying to raise up and appoint three awesome men for the ministry. I'm praying. I'm praying for Jake Studer. I'm praying for Joshua Corlett, Kwaku Sarko DA. I have a vision for these guys. Um, but it's God's part to choose who will be the next leader. Um, it's the potential leader's part to accept God's calling. That's right. But it's your part, it's the current leader's part to pray, God, show me the leader that will replace me. Come on, show me the person that I can pour my heart into so that when I go, the church will crank. That's right. And I, I think I'll be suspicious if, if someone came to me and said, I'm the person that God has sent to replace you. <laughs> You know, some people tend to be overly ambitious, you know what I'm talking about? I'd be a little suspicious of them. Uh, but leaders have got to be sought out. And they're, they're in the most unusual places. Moses was found in the desert. Gideon was hiding. You with me here, guys? Yeah. Go find them and do great things. Well, if you take the first letter from each point, you got M from make every effort, set an example. O, others will be led astray if you don't. D, devote yourself to being a great follower. E, and trust your training to reliable men. And L, L what is it? Follow. Look and pray for God to raise up new leaders. Well, what do you got? Model. Model. Why are we leading by personal example? So we can be a model. You know, if more people were focused on being role models instead of supermodels, this world would be a drastically different place. I'm encouraged because the Lord has blessed me to have both in my beautiful wife. And so, you know, guys, remember, your life may be the only Bible people ever read. Let's make sure it's the holy word of God. Thank you very much.